Okay, hi. So before X, I know I said that in the next, if you watch the previous video, I said in the next video I'm gonna start coding. <laughs> Apologies, I'm not gonna start coding just yet. I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna show you how to get set up with the web editor itself. So the first thing you wanna do is uh, go, go to a web browser. I'm using the Chrome web browser, but the, the and, and, and I'm on a Mac, but you could be on, on any other computer and using a different web browser as well. You wanna go to the URL editor.p5js.org. That's where you want to go. You can follow along and go there right now. What you're going to see is something that looks like this. This is the web editor, and you can actually just start coding. But um, I'm going to show you what these things mean, but like, wow, what if I change this background number to zero? And then I run up here, and there's this button here, this, this button. It looks like a play button, like I'm going to play on my old-timey VCR. <laughs> well, really, this is going to run that code, and I'm going to see, oh, look at this. There's a square with a black background over there. What if I change this to 100 and I click play again? Ooh, that, the color of that changed. What if I say 100 comma zero comma 200? Now the color's purple. So I'm off, I'm off. The train is off the tracks. But I'm gonna come back and explain what all these things are, how you type them, why you type them, and what they mean later. But the thing is, like this is my opus now. I have made this beautiful, wonderful P5 sketch and I wanna share it with the world. I can't. I can't, I could go to file and I can click save, but it says in order to save sketches, you must be logged in. So at the moment, the editor doesn't have any way to save something without you having an account. You can play around, but what you'll want to do is go to sign up. So if you, you might already have an account, you can go to log in. I'm going to click sign up. And here what you can do is you can create a username an email uh, and a password. And if you are, if you don't have your own email address, you know, uh, you can, and, and you have a parent or, uh, or somebody else that you can ask to use their email address to sign up, that's what I would uh, suggest doing. So you want to create that account. Uh, you don't need to use your email other than just for the signing up. So once you've signed up and you've logged in, you're now, I'm going to leave this, you're going to see something like this. Now I created an account called Coding Train, and it will say hello, comma, the username that you picked. So you'll see that. You can go under here under my account. You can see there's things like my sketches, my assets. This is something that will, if, I'm gonna show you how to, you can use images and sounds and upload videos to the editor. Those are things that would appear in my assets. Uh, settings is something I'm gonna show you in a minute. Um, but now we're in P5 itself. Now I wanna go back to my beautiful opus where I don't know why yet, but somehow I changed some numbers and I got this beautiful color over there. Now I can go to File, Save. Once I've done that, this URL up here is a URL forever that, that is my sketch. And in fact, I can go right up here to Sketch, no, File, Share, and you can see, look, now I can share the code for my sketch here, I can actually share a full screen version of the sketch. Let's look at this. Look, at here's my beautiful sketch, and I'm gonna show you how to make more interesting things, and then share them without the code. And then this is something called an embed. So if you have a blog, this is something where you can actually take your sketch and embed it into something else. I'll come back and show you this stuff, maybe again as we get further along. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna worry about it too much right now. Okay, so, We've got it. Ah, here's the thing. Why, what is the name of this project? What is the name of this project? If I zoom in here, the name of the project is Unbiased Shoe. So this is one of my favorite things about the P5 web editor. It will auto-generate a name of each sketch for you. Now, the truth of the matter is you probably want to have some practice of renaming and naming it something that describes what it actually is. I can click this pencil icon and I can call it Coding Train Editor demo, I can hit enter, and now the sketch has that name. The URL, this name is not part of the URL for sharing that sketch, it's just a name for you to keep track of. If you ever go to, for example, file open, and I can see, look, these are other sketches. Now, measly friend is some sketch I must have created that I forgot to rename. Ten print is something that I was creating. Um, so you can see these are the sketches that I have made, and I could go and browse my other ones. Okay, now here's the thing. For me to make my tutorials, I want to, uh, I want to adjust a few settings visually for how it looks to make it easier for the viewer to see it. And so I'm going to go here under settings. And one thing I could do under settings, I've already changed the text size to 36. Um, I'm going to go to this high contrast theme. 
um, and then I'm going to close X here and we're going to see this is a nice high contrast theme. It has a dark background. It also is easily viewable for anyone with, who's colorblind and any visual impairments. So I think it's going to be nice for the video tutorials to use that theme. I also would prefer to make sure that I'm not standing in front of the code by accident. So I'm going to do something a little bit weird that I'm going to happen to mention in this video. I'm going to uh, move the code window to the other side. This is not a feature of the editor. I have someone, a coding train a contributor sent me some code uh, that I was able to hack the browser and I can put the code on the other side and I can see the preview over here. So I am going to, um, sorry, if you bear with me for a second, I am now in my videos, I'm going to have it look like this. Uh, at some point that might become a feature of the editor if, if, if other people need this ability to flip. Uh, where the locations are, or if you really need to know how to do that, I'll provide some instructions in the video description about how to run, uh, add a little button to your uh, web browser to uh, flip this back and forth. But I'm going to leave it this way. I think this is going to allow me to code in a way that you can see the code over here, and if I'm standing in front of the output every so often, no big deal. One more quick thing that I want to mention, actually, thank you to uh, some uh, live viewers who pointed this out. Um, if you don't want to sign up for a new account, you can actually log into the P5 web editor with an account that you already have with Google or with a website called GitHub, which if you don't know what that is, I have some other videos you could watch, but you don't see those on the sign up page. So those don't show here, but if you go to the login page, you can see these options here, login with GitHub or login with Google. So that's another way of um, logging in to the editor. Okay, again, this was not comprehensive. Um, if you want a comprehensive overview of all of the features of the web editor, I will link to the Processing Foundation playlist. There's three videos about P5 and the, and the web editor. Uh, Cassie, the creator of the web editor, does an overview. Matura talks about the accessibility features. And, there, and, there, and, and there's a video about education with P5 from Sopper as well. So, okay, so now, if you somehow made it to the end of this long rambling video, I will really code in the next video. In the next video, I'm going to talk about what are the commands, the instructions, what is the syntax of JavaScript with the P5.js library to get things to appear right over here. See you there.